Yamanginda Nadingaya Yuvalare Wuringa Miria Bara Mari Bewidinga. Hello everyone, my name is Nadi Simpson. I'm a Yulare woman. I'm a Sango and a totem from the Lignum country in northwest New South Wales. Uh, I'm sitting here on Gadigal country in the middle of Sydney's inner west and I am the author of this book, Song of the Crocodile. And I'm going to read a little excerpt from it. It's one of the earlier chapters and the language that is in here, the um, traditional Aboriginal language uh, that you hear is Uwalari language and that's the language of um, freshwater peoples of the Northwest floodplain. Um, I really hope that you enjoy it. Here we go. Malawildur Muranga followed her dada as he walked through the flatness. She noticed the rich purple bloom of the Dibaru as she passed it. Its roots would soon be ready to dig and to eat. She would return later to collect a handful of flowers for her mother's hair. Walking in the groove made by his own feet, she took a seat beside her grandfather under a sprawling gum that threw shade across a near corner of the camp. The settlement spread out before them. Talking time and playing time. A smile swelled at his cheeks. Things that don't often agree. Now we sit and wait. Her da nudged his chin towards the waiting camp. Soon after, three old ones. Men doubled over with age, with thick beards and walking sticks, huddled together at the edge of a cooler bar's great boughs. As they spoke, they drew their words into the ground, their dumbai smooth and shining through years of use. It appeared on them as a longer arm or third leg, not merely a wooden staff used to steady and to draw. Sticks can be useful things. Da shuffled his crossed legs beneath him and smoothed the dirt before him with his hands. He drew three circles in the top corner of his canvas. As he did, a group of bitterly came running into the clearing, boys jostling and pushing and shouting and kicking dust through the camp. Perfect. Da watched as the children became louder, more physical. He began to chuckle as he added the boys, three fingertip dots in the far corner of the sketch. When he had finished, he raised his head. Yama! The word pushed hard from his stomach. It carried across the clearing. The old ones turned towards the call. Da said to her under his breath, Watch carefully now. Straightening, he shouted across the camp, When shall we bore her? Time for a good sing, don't you think? And these noisy bire, must be time they left the camp, went with the men. He nodded at the group of boys now taking it in turns to throw rocks at a sapling. Why do you think you can tell us our business? We decide when it's time for Bora. The old ones leaned on their dumbai, staring hard at Da. Nga, nga, Giro, yes, you are right, but those boys are too old for games. Look at them. They should be out hunting, feeding themselves, learning law. The elders looked hard upon the raucous group, then leaned inwards, speaking, then drawing, casting glances at the group of rowdy boys. Now, my darkest little shadow, you shall learn something of yourself. Her da let out a gleeful laugh, not unlike a child himself. Bire, come here. We want to see if you should begin law. As the boys pushed each other towards the old people, a reed warbler hopped at the edge of the clearing. What do you want, old man? asked the boy. To have a look at your da, your naya. The bird jumped into the air and flew over the heads of the old ones. The boys took off after it, eyes in the clouds, chasing the sky. Don't you run across there? A dumbai swung, connecting with the shins of a boy. Too close? A second dumbai was launched, smashing into the toes of another. Have to knock some sense into you, do I? The final blow cracked against the thigh of a third bidet. Malawadul Muranga winced. The grey ones glared as the eyes of the last boy began to fill with tears. 
It was too much for Grandfather. His howls of laughter rang through the camp and skimmed the river, making a chuckle along with him. What did you hit us for? The Bire spoke through heaving sobs. You trod on us. No, we didn't. We didn't touch you. Another gush of laughter erupted from Dar's body, shaking it with delight. You stood on us. You stepped on our shadow. Dar, stifling his glee, bid Malawil Dormanga listen. Haven't your grandmothers taught you? Careless Wuringa, they're not doing their job. The shadow is a part of us. If you get too close, an old man swung his dumbai, whipping hard through the air, the sound sending a shiver through the boys. It's time you boys went through law. Tell all the Murray, we must make plans and prepare. And you started this mischief. The old man's stick was pointed at Da. Go and take your shadow with you. In three and a half moons, added another, we will bore her, and you shall sing. Until then, keep your meddling to yourself. Da turned to face Malawil Dormuranga. He leaned in close to her. Let that lesson show you the truth of what you are. You are a shadow, a reflection, an extension of self. Two being separate, yet connected. You must care for your shadow, your very own self in every way. Don't let anyone step on it. If it is crossed, it'll make you sick. Some people steal shadows, so don't leave yours lying around. Clever ones know ways to make their shrink or grow. They can talk to their shadows and send it away to carry out their no good plans. If you protect yours, it will do the same for you one day. All these bidet running all over the place, they don't understand how the world works. You are a shadow. So you already know. Yes, Da. And you are a shadow at the darkest of night. Muran, the time of black, of special things, of secrets and whispers. You can melt into the night if, you, if it is your wish. Yes, Da. You are a daughter of dawn. The only thing that's separating darkness from light. And the only thing that joins them. Understand? Ma. Da took up her hands. He held them tenderly against his warm, wrinkled skin. The night is your covering, my beautiful girl. Wrap yourself in it and keep those wombabire away from your shadow. Crack their shins hard if they get too close. Yes, Grandfather. But why are you laughing again? I'm thinking of all the legs you will break in your time. <laughs>